today on Real Ghost Stories Online. The dog sensed it first. Then he heard someone shuffling up the stairs, but no one was there. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is. Love to hear your real ghost stories. You can write in at realghoststoriesonline.com or by calling 855-853-4802. And if you'd like to listen to all of our episodes, no ads, just sign up to be a premium subscriber through Apple Podcasts. That option is there for you right now. It's uh, Tony and Todd with you on today's uh, episode of the program. Pets do tend to sense things before us. Have you ever had it where uh, one of your pets could sense there was something a little off that maybe you didn't see? Yeah, I mean, just general stuff like weather and stuff like that. They always seem to know what's going on. Um, I've never had one of my pets like staring off into space, looking at something or, you know, meowing at something like that. But I certainly know people who've told me stories of, yeah, my dog was just kind of looking up in this area. And then like 20 minutes later, this happened, you know, so it's interesting. I've also heard stories where they can like hear fires and walls and stuff like that before it actually happens with bad wiring and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like hearing like the electrical sound maybe being kind of off and they're like noticing it with their sensitivity. Yeah. And and you've all you've also heard stories like where dogs can like smell cancer and stuff like that in yeah. people. So I, I think they're just every one of their senses is just so much better than ours. It's always weird because anytime my dog comes over and just starts smelling me or doing anything, <laughs> I'm always like, Do I have cancer? <laughs> like, like, I like, have cancer. My, my dog just likes to pet, be pet, that's all. But yeah, I mean it makes you wonder because I've heard that too. Let's go to uh, our first uh, phone call here today. Hi, let's hear a ghost story. In Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, I wanted to tell you guys my real ghost story. So I have many, but this is the first one I would give you guys. The um, this was years ago. My husband's aunt and uncle go away every year to go on a camping trip, and um, it's like mainly his side of the family. They just all go out for like a week or so, and they usually back when we lived in Toledo, two hours away. Um, they would ask us to watch their house because they had two Great Danes at the time and they didn't ever take them with them on the trip. So we had two dogs as well, a Spanador, half black lab, half Cocker Spaniel, and then a Jack Russell. So um, our two kids at the time were probably like 13 and nine. And we lived on one side of town at the time. They lived on the opposite side of town. My husband had to get up the next morning to take our son to... um, the orthodontist who was on the side of town we actually lived on. So he asked me, he said, Hey, um, would you mind staying here, you know, by yourself? I'll take the kids and you can watch the dogs here. And I was like, Oh yeah, that's fine. You know, there's, uh, I got two great Danes and then two other dogs. I felt well protected. I didn't have any issues. And I had stayed in the house before, but not by myself. So, um, they leave. That night, you know, I, I sleep in the aunt and uncle's bedroom, which is an attic converted to a bedroom, which is important in this because there's just the one stairwell in and out. And, you know, when you go up those attic stairs, you can see the person's torso when they get to the top. So I, you know, I lay down. I had the dogs all, you know, ready for bed. Our Jack Russell likes to sleep at my feet under the covers. The two Great Danes have beds on the floor. And then our Spanador at the time, she was being cage trained. She was a puppy, so we had her sleep in the cage so she didn't pee on the floor in the middle of the night. So um, at exactly 5.16 a.m., I awaken to Thor, one of the Great Danes. He gets up, starts barking, and then he goes downstairs. And then Zeus, the other one, he, the other Great Dane, he gets up, starts barking, and goes downstairs. And I'm like, this is real strange. Like, what, what's going on? I have all the doors locked. And again, like I said, I wasn't worried. I got big dogs with me. We're good. So then our Jack Russell, he's at my feet. He gets up. He starts barking, jumps off the bed, and goes downstairs. 
Isabella um, in the cage, she gets up and just starts barking in place because she can't go anywhere. So I go to the top of the stairs and I'm looking down and neither of the Great Danes are anywhere near the stairs. They both said, fuck you. <laughs> they, they walked away from the stairs. Our Jack Russell's at the bottom of the stairs looking at me like, aren't you going to come down? And I called him and I was like, come on, Jax, come back up. His name was Jax. I was like, come on back up. And he looked at me with like the look of, it was like a scared look. Like, I don't want to be up there with you. And I'm sorry, I'm not listening to you. And he walks away from the stairs. And I was like, maybe there's a squirrel. Maybe somebody was trying to break in, but the dogs deterred them. I don't really know what's going on, but I'm going to go back to sleep. And I go lay back down on the bed. And as soon as I lay down, I hear footsteps starting to come up those stairs. So it was like an old person trying to make their way up the stairs. I hear step, step, shuffle, step, step, shuffle. And I said, who in the fuck is in this house? So I'm freaking out. And, but not like outwardly, just inwardly. I'm just sitting there like watching the stairs, like trying to figure out, am I going to have to attack somebody? So steps keep coming up, you know, all the way up the stairs, get all the way to the top. I don't see anybody's torso, which I would have seen had they walked all the way up. As soon as the, st the steps get to the top of the stairs and stop, the stepping noises, I should say, the dogs immediately stop barking, come back upstairs and lay down like nothing happened. And I said, okay. <laughs> so my first thought was I should gather all my stuff and my dogs, and I'll just go back to my side of town and go to sleep. But then I thought, no, because by the time I do this, it was like 5.16 a.m., probably like 5.20 by the time this is all played out. And I said, okay, no, because by the time I get over there, I'll probably only get another hour of sleep. So I said, nothing showed itself, nothing harmed you, just go back to sleep. And I kind of willed myself into this calm, like talked myself out of it, because that was not my first paranormal encounter by that point. So I said, no, you're fine. Just don't look at the mirror behind you or on the headboard by your head and roll over and just go to sleep. So I did. Uh, the next morning I got ready and, you know, while I was getting ready, I felt like I was being watched, but nothing happened. Now, the reason I wanted to make this my very first real gross story I told you guys was because I'm actually headed to that house right now. Unfortunately, my husband's grandmother passed, was, passed away this past weekend. And um, we are going to be staying up there with the aunt and uncle, you know, before the funeral services. So I'm going, I'm headed en route 10 p.m. Eastern Standard right now, uh, headed there to stay in that same house. Now, a little side note, too, when they got back, the aunt and uncle, I told them about what happened. And they said, you know, I told them all about the story and they said, oh, that's funny. Well, they were like something we never told you guys. There was an old woman who lived in this house and she died. I believe she died in the house. And they said, that's how they got the house so cheap. And I'm like, well, great way to let me fucking know. It's okay now. We had a good laugh about it. So that's my story. I love your show. Um, you guys are amazing. I just recently discovered you guys. I went back to the earliest episodes and I'm working my way up to the top, to the most current. So uh, Keep it going. I absolutely love it. I stopped listening to my serious radio, which I pay for for this. So it's it's very interesting. Uh, you guys have a wonderful evening. Thank you for sharing all of that. It's going to be interesting. And I do want to hear a follow up to see if anything happens while they're staying at that house again after th this funeral and this new death in the family. Yeah, and I, I just got to start things off by saying nothing good ever happens in Toledo, Ohio. I lived there for <laughs> a short period of time, and, and uh, there's there's many stories. But you know, it's it's so weird how um, you know this person says basically I've had other experiences. So eventually, I kind of calmed myself down. Nothing's happening. I'm experiencing something, but I'm probably likely very safe, and was able to kind of get through the situation. But again, that aha moment when someone says, oh, yeah, there was an old lady who died in this house. What? And you didn't tell me? Come on. Yeah. But but the, but the thing of it, too, if there's no ghost stories going on or being talked about, it would be kind of odd to just kind of bring it up like, oh, yeah, we're going to have uh, chicken for dinner. And by the way, an old woman died here once. You know, <laughs> it'd be, right some, it'd that, be something yes. I would do. It would people would be like, wow, that's really out of turn. But I don't think most people would do that. <laughs> But it'll be interesting to see if uh, if uh, she's haunting the house now, if there's any more 
uh, activity back from that uh, original one. Great story. Thank you for sharing. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number if you'd like to share yours with us. And if you like the podcast, you want it ad-free, sign up to be a premium subscriber through Apple Podcasts right now. Get access to all of our archive of episodes and all of our new episodes ad-free. Check it out on Apple Podcasts right now or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Until next time, for Todd, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.